muy buenos días a todas las personas, gracias por permanecer acá, eh, gracias por conectarse a esta sesión informativa de Call Futuro con The New York Film Academy. Mi nombre es Luisa Ayala, asistente del programa de consejería académica y tendré el gusto de acompañarlos en esta sesión junto con Jill Matos, representante de esta institución, que nos contará sobre la oferta académica, requisitos de admisión, opciones de financiación y demás información relevante para iniciar sus estudios de posgrado en el exterior. Importante recordar que tenemos un convenio que ofrece una beca de 10 mil dólares americanos sobre el valor de la matrícula por cada año de estudios para los beneficiarios col futuro en los programas listados en el acuerdo. Tengan en cuenta que para acceder a este beneficio deben postularse primero al programa crédito beca de col futuro el cual abrirá su próxima convocatoria en enero 9 del 2024. Los invito a conectarse a las charlas informativas que es este viernes eh, primer viernes de cada mes a las 8 am, totalmente virtual. Bueno, y sin más introducción, mil gracias, Jill, por acompañarnos el día de hoy y puedes iniciar tu presentación. Bueno, muchas gracias a Luisa, bienvenidos a todos. And, um, si me permiten, voy a hacer esto en inglés porque mi español es un poquito machucado a veces. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to do this in English. So, um, but... Si tienen alguna duda, me la pueden hacer en español también si se sienten más cómodos. But um, anyways, thank you for joining uh, and thank you Col Futuro. We are very, very happy with our, uh, our relationship that we've had now for uh, almost 10 years now with New York Film Academy and Col Futuro and all the wonderful students that we get uh, from Colombia uh, thanks to the, the, our, our partnership and help with you guys uh, as well. So uh, I want to give you guys some information about the school. Um, I am the regional director for Latin America and the Caribbean. So... When you apply, you'll be working with me or my team or somebody from my team. So we will work with you every step of the way through the process. Um, I am going to uh, show you all a quick video first, uh, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the application process and then the school offerings and all that stuff. So let me uh, share my screen here with you all so you all can see the this video. de Panamá, Venezuela, Venezuela, Quito, Ecuador, Uruguay, la Ciudad de México, Colombia, Colombia, Bogotá, Colombia. En mi país tengo 10 años de carrera como actriz en teatro y televisión. Decidí venir acá a Los Ángeles porque quería aprender y ganar experiencia en el ámbito del film como actriz. Me interesa dirigir documentales. Especialmente me encantaría viajar por el mundo y filmar distintas culturas, distintas personas, porque creo que la realidad es mucho más fantástica que la ficción. Me encanta escribir y leer desde que soy niño. Siempre he sido como fanático del guión, porque es cuando todo sucede. Es como la columna de una película, la columna vertebral. Muchas personas me preguntan, bueno, ¿actúas o produces? Y yo les respondo, ambas. En New York Film Academy me ha dado la oportunidad de combinar ambas cosas. Creo que es la felicidad más grande porque estoy haciendo dos cosas que me apasionan. En Colombia trabajaba como director de fotografía, pero estaba un poco estancado en un mismo nivel. Por eso vine acá a aprender muchas otras técnicas para regresar y como subir de nivel. Por lo general las carreras son muy prácticas, en términos de que siempre estás haciendo cosas. No estás todo el tiempo en un aula, leyendo un libro. El primer día de escuela, mi maestra nos puso a escribir pequeñas historias, lo cual dije, wow, y a la semana ya estábamos trabajando en nuestro primer guión. Todos mis maestros trabajan en la industria, tienen muchísimas experiencias y anécdotas. Puedes tener consultations con todos los profesores que quieras, las veces que quieras. Todas las semanas hay un Q&A con alguien que tuvo éxito con alguno de sus proyectos y generalmente son gente muy reconocida. New York Film Academy me ofrece diferentes workshops y diferentes intercambios con Universal y con Warner. Es una oportunidad muy buena poder estar en un estudio de grabación tan grande como el Universal. Puedes hacer tus trabajos ahí, puedes practicar ahí. No hay para oportunidades muy chéveres. El acceso a las cámaras, el acceso a las locaciones. Y eso sin duda alguna me llamó muchísimo la atención. Yo dije, este es un lugar donde puedes encontrar muchas oportunidades, muchos contactos. La escuela le importa mucho conectar sus diferentes programas de actuación, filmación, guión. No solo estás en el departamento con los actores, sino también puedes trabajar con directores, con productores, con fotógrafos. Aquí todo se trata de la colaboración. 
Mira, el Academy tiene algo muy especial que es lo multicultural. Hay personas de todas partes del mundo. He conocido gente de Rusia, de China, Mozambique, Italia, Brasil, Malasia. Que igual que uno, están en un lugar extraño buscando aprender. En el mejor de los casos nos obliga a abrirnos un poco. Siempre está el enriquecimiento de trabajar con gente diferente porque siempre puedes aprender algo. Que también puedes agregar a tus películas cuando las haces. La verdad es que Los Ángeles es hermoso, las playas, es colorida, es visual, es dinámica. Hice mi primer año en Nueva York. Nueva York es la ciudad que nunca duerme y me encanta porque también vengo de una ciudad muy agitada que es Bogotá. Vine directamente a Miami porque es una ciudad que es muy diversa y es bastante latina en sí. Una vez ya teniendo los contactos que tú hiciste en Miami, New York o en LA, tú ya puedes aplicar todo eso a lo que tú quieres hacer de tus propias películas. La experiencia que uno gana acá es completamente inimaginable. No es tanto de dónde vienes, sino es algo más de lo que tú tienes para decir, es algo de lo que tú aportas a las personas, al mundo. Los documentales que me gustaría hacer y los que estoy haciendo ya desde antes, por lo general tienen un fin social. Me gusta denunciar cosas que creo que están mal o que creo que deberían cambiarse. Si una historia pone en perspectiva una pequeña pregunta sobre cada uno de nosotros, bien, sobre la familia, sobre el amor, sobre los conflictos, sobre la guerra. Son las historias que me tocan el corazón, no me importa mucho el género. Yo quiero saber que mi comedia está haciendo feliz a las personas. Y eso solo se logra si amas lo que haces. Las únicas personas que realmente logran lo que quieren son los que realmente lo quieren por dentro. Esta universidad te da muchas herramientas, pero también la carrera la haces tú. Te dan todas las herramientas para cumplir tu sueño, para contar tu historia. Es una oportunidad muy grande. Esa es la razón por la cual vine al nivel firma que Um, inclusive creo que ups, me shut that off. Um, creo que los tres de Bogotá vinieron de por futuro. Um, so, anyways, I'm gonna talk to you guys a little bit about the program and the school here, and then I want to give you guys some advice as well. I'm gonna talk a little bit about making your portfolios, auditions, and stuff when you are applying to film schools or acting schools, and what you should be including on that. So, um, the video does a great job of talking about how practical New York Film Academy is, what you're going to be studying here. I always tell students that if you're the type of student that likes to learn from lectures and theory and, you know, getting uh, uh, talked to in speeches and stuff like that, this is not the school for you. This school is going to give you theory. It's going to give you technique. Okay, get in front of the camera. Okay, go get the camera. Show me what you learned. So it's a very project-based curriculum. Um, so without further ado, these are the master programs that we offer. Uh, the ones in blue are visual and performing arts, uh, or sorry, the um, the visual arts. Uh, performing arts is in pink, and then the graphic arts is in yellow. So you can see the different type of programs we offer there. Uh, we have a couple of MA programs, which are one-year master degrees. So there's an MA in producing, and there's an MA in film and media production. Uh, those are only offered in Los Angeles. The other MFA programs, you can take them in either Miami or LA. Now, why did I say New York there? Uh, we don't offer the full master's in New York. However, if you are doing a two-year master's, you can do the first year in New York and then do your second year in Miami or in L.A. Um, so if you wanted to get the, the double two-city experience, you can do it that way as well. Um, but these are the different master programs we offer here. Um, so if you're doing anything from the graphic arts, 3D visual, 3D animation, visual effects, that's a, a and game design are two careers that are growing exponentially. Uh, photography as well. And we have filmmaking, film and media, screenwriting, cinematography, everything to do with um, making a movie there. Uh, in terms of our locations, you saw that in the video as well. New York City, uh, we're located right next to Battery Park. So on the southern tip of Manhattan, right around from Wall Street. So very centrally located there. Um, our, uh, and, you know, you obviously you can shoot stuff on the street as well, uh, as long as you have a permit. Uh, which the school will help you get. Our Los Angeles campus, this is our largest campus. So this is located in the Burbank section of Los Angeles. Uh, Burbank is where you saw Warner Brothers and Universal Studios in the video. We're located right next to where they're located as well. So actually Warner Brothers, you can see the water tank right down the street. 
from the LA campus. Um, that's actually the back lot that where you can shoot stuff at the universal back lot as well. Um, our Miami campus, this is our uh, newest campus. We opened this one in 2013, but we just moved into a brand new state-of-the-art um, uh, facility there. Uh, it's beautiful. It's about three times bigger than what we had. Three brand new production spaces there as well, located right in the heart of Lincoln Road on Miami Beach. Um, so it's a very beautiful location to be at as well. Uh, like I said, three production spaces inside where you can transform that into whatever you want with the lights, the soundproofing and all that stuff as well. Um, I won't talk about Australia and Florence just because we don't offer master programs there, but we do also have those uh, different campuses. Um, those of you interested in applying, the very first step in this process, and you can scan that QR code there for the application page, um, but the very first step in the process will be to start your application online. Um, you're going to see as you go through the application, it's going to ask you for different requirements. Uh, the requirements for this program, I'll go over them in a bit. Uh, for the master programs. But the one thing to keep in mind is you don't need to have everything at once before you submit the application. You can submit the application and bypass everything it's asking you for, the requirements, um, and then submit it with the $75 application fee. And then you can submit your requirements later on. So you don't need to have those requirements up front. Um, but as you go through the application, you'll see everything it's going to be asking you for, where you went to school, email, contact information, all that stuff. And then you'll see where it asks for the different requirements as well. Um, once you submit your application, it will you will get access to the application portal where you're going to be able to upload all of your stuff. So when you create your application and submit it, then you can start uh, also uh, submitting your documents afterwards as well, all of the requirements. Uh, so to go over some of the ad uh, application requirements, like I said, it all starts with the application. Then you have your uh, portfolio or audition, which I'll talk a little bit more about later because that's very, very important. Uh, two letters of recommendation. They could be from, from any teacher, any counselor, anybody you've done work for. It doesn't necessarily have to be somebody that is in the industry. Now, if you have somebody in the industry that can write one for you, that's great. But Honestly, I would rather have a math teacher that knows you very well and can speak about your character and why you would be a good choice for the school than somebody who maybe you work with for two hours that's in the industry, right? So when choosing your recommenders, you only need two of them, uh, but it could be anybody that knows you well. Please, not a family member and not a friend. Uh, I know that sounds funny and I know that sounds obvious, but I did have one time uh, um Un estudiante que su mamá escribió su carta de recomendación. Uh, and uh, como buen mamá latina, it was an amazing letter of recommendation, but unfortunately we couldn't use it. Uh, like, well, who is this? That's my mom. Well, can't have your mom write your letter. Well, but she's my boss. No, 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 I can't, can't do that. So just keep that in mind. Um, keep it out of the family of friends. Uh, narrative statement uh, is an essay, un ensayo, where it's going to be two pages describing why you want to go to New York Film Academy and what you want to do afterwards. Now, Narrative statement uh, or essay, whatever the school you're applying to calls it. My big piece of advice for this that I always tell students is this is your opportunity to give your application a little bit of personality and a little bit of life, right? Um, up until this point, your application is a name, email address, home address, where you went to school. We really don't have a sense for who you are. With the narrative statement, this is going to give us a better understanding of who you are as a person why you want to study this, why are you passionate about it, and what are your plans afterwards, right? So take that opportunity to, in those two to three pages, to describe all that and give us a better understanding of that. Um, transcript and diploma, these are your transcript is notas, uh, and diploma is your diploma certificate. So obviously, in your case, this will be your university transcript and university diploma. If you are still in school and you're not graduating until uh, May or so, you can apply with your current in-progress transcripts and you can submit the final one and then the diploma later on. Um, we will need translations to English uh, from these. Um, so you will need to do, we'll need the Spanish and then the English version as well. If you're applying to a master's in Miami, you will also need what's called a credit evaluation, which is going to be basically an evaluation done by a NASIS certified company where it says that that degree and, and diploma is equivalent to one in the United States. We all know they are. This is something the state of Florida requires us to do. Um, but uh, but yeah, so that's a little extra step if you're applying to the Miami campus. Uh, and then your IELTS, TOEFL, 
uh, or Duolingo exam. Um, really, I this this slide's a little old because we're not accepting Duolingo anymore, so it would need to be TOEFL or IELTS. We did accept Duolingo for a while during COVID and all that, but um, so uh, but TOEFL or IELTS. Uh, so for the TOEFL, you're going to need a 78 or higher. And then for the IELTS, it'll be a 6.5 or higher on that exam. Um, again, I just want to remind, we will have a question and answer session. So if you do have questions, um, you know, start writing them down and uh, we'll uh, we'll get to them in a bit. Uh, I mentioned the audition and the creative portfolios. Uh, these are really, really important because not only are they part of the application requirements, but it's what's going to also determine what you get awarded in a talent-based scholarship, which is a partial scholarship that, that we offer. Now, we mentioned at the beginning that because of our agreement and convenio with, with Colfuturo, that you, if you're selected for Colfuturo, you will automatically get $10,000 from the school. That is true per year. Um, now, one thing I do want to note is that regarding, depending where you are in the application process, um, you may have already submitted your audition or portfolio and have already received a talent-based award before you're awarded Col Futuro, right? So what that means is that whatever, if you are awarded Col Futuro and you've already had, let's say, $5,000 in talent-based scholarship, um, we will add that up to a certain point. So it doesn't mean that if you have 15000 already, you'll get an additional 10000 because of the agreement. The agreement will... Um, sort of complement whatever the school has. So let me explain that better. If you apply and you haven't applied for uh, with an audition or the creative portfolio yet, and you're awarded Col Futuro, then you will get $10,000 automatically. If you have already applied and you received, let's say $5,000 uh, a year in um, talent-based award, then yes, we would add that on because the maximum the school can give you is $15,000 regardless of where it comes from, right? That's the maximum that we can award. Um, so, you know, again, it, it complements it or it's a big part of it. So that's the way it is. But we'll you know, assess it case by case. Um, auditions, how to prepare your auditions. Um, so for acting, it's a, uh, two contrasting monologues. They need to be 60 to 90 seconds long. And they could be from anything that was made after 1960, any movie, play, or TV show. So no Shakespeare, no classics or anything like that. Um, anything made after 1960. My big piece of advice here, again, contrasting. So one dramatic, one comedic. My big piece of advice here is stay away from anything that is too popular. Again, I'll repeat it because it's very, very important. Stay away from any monologues that are too popular. I'll give you an example. The guys love to pick the Joker. Um, and the Joker is a great character. It's an iconic character. It's a fun character. But you're not going to do that differently than Heath Ledger. You're not going to do it differently than Joaquin Phoenix. God help you if you're going to try to do that like Jack Nicholson. Um, so we want you to stay away from things where you're going to be copying rather than acting. right? So try to choose something that isn't too popular where you don't have that reference. I always tell people to pull something from a play because they don't have that visual reference. right? Um, but you know, that's what what, uh, what I recommend there. You can record this and send it via an unlisted YouTube link. You can do it over Zoom. Or if you are, uh, um, if we're going to your city, which we will be in Bogota the week of October 23rd, and we are actually conducting auditions uh, that Monday. Um, so you could do it in person as well um, while, while we're in Bogota. Or if you happen to go to one of our campuses, you can do it there as well. Uh, in terms of your portfolios, those of you that are applying for anything that's not acting for film, you will need a creative portfolio. Now, the number one thing that I get from people about portfolios is, I don't think my work is good enough. And that's the number one thing I hear from people. And I am here to tell you that um, your work is good enough. <laughs> um, we know you're coming to us to learn. And some of you may have more experience than others, which is great. But the main thing that they want to see in this is, you know, we know you're not going to have a Michael Bay film with all these graphics and crazy, you know, multi-million dollar budget. We understand that. But what we want to see is that you have attempted to do this and you can visually tell a story, right? So again, depending on what you're applying for, if you're applying for filmmaking, if you're applying for cinematography, we want to see examples of work that you've done. Um, you can also show us stories that you've written, right? So you can have samples of screenplays, Um uh, storyboards work as well but really you can show all these creative things but we want the focus of that portfolio to be what you're applying to so if it's filmmaking we want to see some visual samples if you're applying for screenwriting we want to see some writing samples 
Um, if you're planning for something like animation, we want to see drawings or any artwork or illustrations or stop motion, things that you've done. The way you're going to present this, we need it on one link. Um, and when, you know, when you apply, we'll, we'll set up a time and I'll show you examples and all that, but I'll mention it now in case you guys have any questions. We need everything on one link. So there's a lot of different ways to do this. You can do it on weeks.com. You can do it on canva.com. They all have like these free portfolio sites that you can just plug and play your own stuff into it. And then you send me one link, right? Um, so just remember this, your creative portfolio is an extension of your creativity. So when you're organizing that, make sure you're doing it in an organized way, an organized fashion, and you're also uh, presenting, presenting your work in a professional way. Um, but I'll show you examples and we'll set up a time to to go over it um, when you apply to the program. Uh, or again, uh, if in Bogota and you want to apply first to the program, we can go ahead and schedule a one-on-one -on -one when we're in Bogota uh, that week of October 23rd in a couple of weeks. Um, we'll also be hosting a free info session and masterclass that day as well. Um, so if you do want information on that, I'll send you some more info on that so that you guys can go take advantage of that also. It's a filmmaking workshop that we'll be doing. Um, so that's what the portfolio is going to be. So again, those two things are very important, audition or creative portfolio, because it's what's going to determine how much you get in a talent-based scholarship, which is a partial scholarship that the school offers. Um, so you can scan that if you want to get the, the guidelines. Um, but again, I will work with you very closely on this and, and uh, show you some examples and uh, give you tips on how to organize that. Um, I always like to say that my students get uh, high amounts of scholarships because we're organizing it. I know exactly what they're looking for and how they want that organized. Um, I'll tell you a quick story. I know that, that we don't have all the time in the world here, but I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I had a student my first year working here who she did all the videos for the Barcelona Fashion Week. They were awesome videos. They were really well done, really well shot, high quality. And she sent me a bunch of videos and all that, a bunch of links. We submitted that for review. The feedback I got was very talented, great work, didn't follow instructions. <laughs> so that's what we're avoiding here with the portfolio guidelines and all that. And, you know, we'll, we'll, I'll help you organize that and uh, present that in the way they're looking for as well. Um, in terms of deadlines and intakes, uh, students love asking me about deadlines. Um, and the reality is the school doesn't really have a hard deadline because we have rolling admissions, right? So we have admissions in January, we have admissions in May, and we have admissions in August as well. Um, but what I will say, you being international students, um, you want to make sure that you have everything done six months before your start date. And why is that? because you can start applying for a United States visa six months before your start date. So you want to make sure that you've been accepted, you have all your documents in and everything, you have paid your deposit to reserve your spot in the class, and you start applying for the I-20 application. Now, our international student office, they will work with you and help you through this process. But basically, you'll fill out the I-20 application, financial verification forms that the government requires us to check and make sure that you have the money for the tuition and all that stuff. And you know, the reality is for some of you, you might not be able to do it six months in advance because maybe you're relying on the Cultura funding and you haven't heard from that yet, right? Um, which is fine. You know, again, six months is uh, the earliest that you can start applying for the visa. Um, but I wouldn't recommend waiting till like a month before and all that, especially with the way the appointments are right now. They're still backed up, um, which is kind of crazy, but they are still backed up um, because of COVID. So, um, you know, you want to make sure that you're leaving yourself enough time to apply for the student visa. Um, I mentioned the awards that we offer. And uh, again, the maximum the school can give you, regardless of where these awards are coming from, is about $15,000 um, for most programs. Some of them are about 12000 but for most programs. Um, so regardless of where that's coming from, um, that's the maximum the school can give you. But these are the different ones you can apply for. And most of the Col Futuro students, what they do, honestly, is they'll apply for the talent-based award. And then if they get Col Futuro, that makes up for the maximum right there with those two. Um, but if it doesn't, you can also apply for these other ones. Um, Merit-based awards only for bachelor programs. It doesn't apply for master's. But these other ones you can. Needs-based is going to be based on your finances or your family finances. Uh, DEI Bridge Grant is Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Grant. Uh, and this is for people that come from diverse backgrounds, which obviously you all being from Colombia and being from, from uh, Latinos, from South America, um, you know, that, that qualifies you for that right there. Uh, and then there's the Matthew Modine Master Scholarship, which is 
for those of you that don't know Matthew Modine, he was a uh, papa in Stranger Things. Uh, but Matthew Modine is on the board of New York Film Academy. And that Matthew Modine scholarship is for master's students as well. So if you have experience in the industry before and you're bringing that experience to the classroom, then I recommend or advise you to also apply for that as well. Uh, but keeping in mind that the maximum the school can give you is $15,000, regardless of the combination uh, of where it comes from. Um, that doesn't mean that if you get something externally that you can't apply to it, right? Because we do have a lot of people that can do, they'll do like or Futuro, they'll do like it's a text, and then they combine what we give them as well with that. So uh, you are able to combine external stuff with what the school gives you. Um, all right. Well, that's talent-based award needs because we already talked about other stuff. Housing. Um, we do have housing coordinators at all three campuses that will help you look for apartments. We do have student residents at the New York campus, which is located in North Brooklyn. Um, but I'll be 100% honest with you. A lot of you are master students. A lot of you are uh, maybe older than, than 20 years old, 21 years old. Remember that the student residences, they're going to be a lot of 18, 19 year olds there. So a lot of student, a lot of our master students don't like staying there, but it is an option for you if you want. Uh, if not, we will assist you in finding a roommate or another uh, student who's starting off and looking for a roommate as well, or maybe current students that are looking for a roommate. Um, you know, I'm based out of the Miami campus. I can tell you that here in Miami, uh, over 90% of our students live within walking, biking, skateboard, scooter distance from where the school is, uh, and they have everything that they need right there in that area. Um, so again, as an international student, just to reiterate the steps that you're going to have to take. Remember, I mentioned at the top of this, your very first step is going to be applying to the uh, program that you want. Submit all of your documents, get accepted. Then you submit all of your I-20 stuff. That's where our international student office will work with you. I always tell students uh, that don't ask me any visa questions. <laughs> I can help you with what I can, but a lot of times they'll, they'll come back to me for visa stuff and I don't get involved with that because I never want to give you the wrong information. Y para mí, todo lo que tenga que ver con las visas es como japonés. <laughs> so, um, so I never want to give you the wrong information. I can give you basic info, but most everything related to the visa is going to be with our international office. Everything else is going to be with me or my team. Um, so these are the different steps that you'll take here. Um, you saw in the video the guest speaker series, and that's something that's really cool for students as well as, you know, we do constantly have speakers on campus that U.S. students will have access to. Um, and you can see uh, a lot of names here, obviously, you, you will uh, recognize, uh, obviously, Spielberg, Pacino, Ron Howard. Um, but we do, you know, constantly have different types of guest speakers that come on campus um, to speak to the students as well. Uh, in terms of our alumni, we're very, very proud of what our students have gone on to do and the work that they're doing in the industry. Uh, you can go to our alumni page, which is, which is nifa.edu forward slash alumni, and you can see by program what different people are up to. Uh, these are some of the more notable ones. You know, Bill Hader, uh, is Barry, great show if you haven't seen it. Uh, Issa Rae also, her show on Insecure, uh, or sorry, her show on HBO Insecure was really, really good. Aubrey Plaza from Parks and Recreation and a bunch of other stuff. She's also a knife alum. Uh, Manuel Garcia Rulfo, he was in The Lincoln Lawyer and uh, the, the Magnificent Seven as well. He's a knife alum. But you can check it all out and check the uh, the, the page there to see what some of our alumni have been up to. Um, and that's it. Let's open it up to some some question and answers. Uh, I'm curious to see the uh, the questions that you all have. Let me stop the screen share here. All right. Gracias do we have for the presentation. Entonces, ahora vamos a continuar con la sección de preguntas. Los invito a quien esté conectado, pues que pueda escribir en la sección Q&A eh, y Jill con gusto las responderá. Tenemos aquí una pregunta de Angélica. Dice, ¿qué recomiendas para el portafolio de un productor? Um, el portafolio de un productor, este, bueno, pueden mostrar cualquier video que hayan producido. Um, pueden mostrar también si tienen notas de production notes, de location scouting, anything that has to do with that whole production aspect, budget, scheduling, todo eso que tiene que ver con production. Um, costume design, este, si tiene algunos uh, guiones que has escrito, también puede mostrar eso. Um, videos que han hecho. So, hay muchas cosas que puede mostrar uh, en, en el portafolio de un productor. Uh, a lot, a lot of things that you can put in there. So. So, what makes um, a strong candidate for the New York Film Academy? 
Um, I think the, the number one thing, and, and this is never a problem with students that come from Col Futuro, because <laughs> they're all very, very good. If you're applying to this, it means you're a very good student. Um, the main thing that I'm always looking for is students that are passionate about this. Um, because I'll tell you right now, and I've told students in the past before, you know, I, we'll get a lot of students sometimes that are like, yeah, I want to study. Why do you want to study this? Oh, I like movies. Okay. Have you tried it before? Have you written it? No, no, I just, I like movies. Okay. I'm like, um, and you can sometimes tell the people obviously that are a lot more passionate about it than people that are just like, yeah, you know? Um, and the, the truth is like, if you're not passionate about it, these programs are going to eat you up a lot. They are because they're very intensive. They come very quick. It's about 25 or 30 hours a week plus what you're shooting on weekends and working on and stuff. So again, when I say these programs are practical, and very hands-on and you're going to get your hands dirty. I really, really mean it. It's going to put you, it's going to test you like if you were working on, on set and stuff. Um, so we, the number one thing I always say is I want students that are passionate. Um, I want students that have at least attempted to tell a story because a lot of people may not have the ability to shoot a movie. They may not have the ability, the actors and all that to do it, but they have great stories that they want to tell. And that's the big thing that we're looking for as well. We want great storytellers. If you're making a video game and the video game has the best graphics in the world and the story is horrible, nobody's going to play it. If you are writing a story, nobody's going to read it if it's horrible. If you're making a movie, nobody's going to watch it if it's a horrible story. So story is the biggest part of that. Um, and just having the ideas. That's what we want. We want people to have ideas. So oftentimes people will do a portfolio. They'll include what's called the film treatment, which is just an idea that they have for movie, a movie or a TV show in the future. Right. It's like, here's a synopsis. These are the characters. These are the character descriptions. And this is so far the story arc I have. That's perfectly fine to include. Um, I had a student. She's now in her final year of the bachelor program from Bogota. I met her pre-COVID when she was a junior in high school. And um, when I met her and told her about the portfolio, she was like this. I was like, what's the matter? And she's like, I don't have anything. I don't have an actor. My school doesn't have a, a film program. I don't have cameras. And I was like, calm down. You have a phone. That phone shoots better than cameras did five years ago. Um, shoot something easy. Just tell a story. They want to see that you can visually tell a story. She made a really cute five-minute video. I got to get a copy of it. A really cute five-minute video about her golden retriever, Leo. And it was beautifully done, like stun in the background, low-angle shot. Leo's panting, water coming down his thing. Nice, fun music, voiceover. This is Leo. Leo loves to do three things. He loves to run. Leo running by the camera. He loves to eat, Leo chowing down and the sound of that. And he loves to sleep, Leo snoring, right? And it was a cute five-minute story with a climax in the middle with a, with a squirrel. There was a resolution. Um, but through different angles, music and stuff, she told this cool story with her phone and her dog, you know? So um, I think people sometimes overthink what they need to show us, um, you know, and, and we fully understand you're coming to us to learn. Um, I had uh, one student, actually one of the students that was in that video, she made an awesome movie about um, it was and you don't know who is talking till about two minutes into it where she's talking about it's a voiceover talking about the people and it's different images of Bogota. And about a minute or two into it, you realize that she, her voiceover is the city of Bogota talking about its inhabitants uh, and about the the fun parts, the sad parts, the heartbreak, the the you know those logos all that stuff like and it was really really well done and really well shot so again don't freak out about it about the the, the portfolio um we really just want to see that you have cool stories to tell perfect so how do five semester master's programs work is the cost of the fifth semester full tuition uh, no, so the cost is per semester. That's a good question. Uh, so everything will be per semester. So when you go to our webpage under tuition, uh, you will see the cost by semester always. Um, so you'll see a tuition cost. And then depending on the program, there's also an equipment fee. Um, those of you that want to do filmmaking or cinematography, um, the fee is the like the best deal ever because it's about $1,600 $1, per semester. But any of you who have rented equipment, multiply that by a lot in the United States, it would cost you so much money to rent equipment there. And the cameras that you have are amazing professional cameras, lighting, sound, you get everything from the school with that equipment fee. Um, but uh, but yeah, the price is per semester. Thank you. Could you please repeat the scholarship we have uh, with Col Futuro? Yeah, so uh, any student that gets Col Futuro will get $10,000 
so long. So the ten thousand dollars is the maximum that we'll, we'll, we'll give for it, right? But it depends on if they where they are in the process. So if the student has already received the scholarship from the school for like let's say five thousand um, dollars from from the school then the maximum that they can get that we can give is $15,000. So, you know, that would match up perfectly. But if they already have a scholarship that let's say is $10,000, then that Corfuturo scholarship, rather than being 10,000 free, it'll be 5,000 free to complement what they already have, you know? Um, Because some of them come, depending where they apply in the process, some of them apply like a year and a half in advance and they don't have anything yet. And um, then they'll, you know, they don't have any scholarship awarded yet from the school. But fifteen thousand is the maximum the school can give you. Ten thousand would be uh, what you get from Col Futuro, or from our agreement with Col Futuro. Okay. Yeah. Can students then, work on campus? Uh, that, another good question. No. Um, so we're not. Uh, uh, some schools, like for example, like uh, like University of Michigan, or like those really big schools that have about fifty thousand students. Uh, they're very different because they have. They're obviously a lot larger. They're like cities you know um our schools aren't that big uh, so your classroom sizes you'll never have more than 14 people in a class um it's it's very small in that sense so you're not able to work on campus um as a student you're not able to work legally either in, in the united states until you graduate now when you graduate you can do what's called opt uh, which is an extension of your visa opt stands for optional practical training and it will allow you to work in the United States for a year after you graduate. Um, so it's a really good way to get experience. Uh, it's a really good way to get out there and get into the field. Uh, we've had students that came to us from Corfuturo that did the uh, one-year OPT, and then they were able to get work and get you know sponsorship and different things like that afterwards. I'm not saying that's what you should expect because it's it's not the easiest thing to get, but it is possible, and, and there have been students that have been successful with that. Can students choose to uh, do an internship during the master's program? Yeah, they definitely can. Um, so if students uh, want to do an internship, they definitely can. Um, what I will advise with that is um, internships are very hit or miss. And what do I mean by that? An internship, you might get one where you have this amazing person you're working for. They're teaching you a lot and you're doing a lot. But you may also get one where you're just getting coffee and making copies. Now, Again, at the school, everybody who's under that roof, we don't offer science, we don't offer business, we don't offer uh, derechos, we don't offer medicine. Everything we offer there is related to visual and performing arts and, and the film industry. What that means for you is that everybody there is a potential network for you, and it's a potential person you can collaborate with. And we definitely push that collaboration. Um, I always say that a lot of schools offer acting, filmmaking, and what we offer, but at a lot of schools, those departments don't interact. We encourage that interaction here and we want you to know because as a director, a filmmaker, it's very important for you to learn how to direct actors, not your friend who's also in directing and gets in front of the camera. Actors, same way. You need that interaction. So what I mean by that, circling back to the internship, is that you need to assess for yourself if that internship is going to be worth it more than the stuff you're going to be creating while you're in school. Because remember, you still have your projects and everything going on that you have to work on while you're in school that you're creating. And this is going to be part of your reel at the end. It's going to be part of everything, your stuff that you're going to submit to film festivals. Um, so is that internship going to be more important than that? Um, you need to assess that yourself, right? Uh, some of them are, some of them aren't. So, um, but the school does, um, I didn't mention it, but a couple of things that we have, we have our industry outreach team that will help you with your reels. They'll help you with setting up a plan for when you graduate, like to, to try to get a job. And I preface it with this too, any creative school that guarantees you work afterwards is lying to you. That's not the way this field works. I used to work for a business school and my business students would go for, um, uh, actually, you guys work a lot with them, Halt International Business School. Um, I used to run the Latin America region for them. And a lot of our students, they would go to three, four, five different interviews before they were hired for master's in finance or MBAs. Um, here, for example, if you're an actor, in 45 seconds, they know if they want you for that role or not. Doesn't mean you're a bad actor. That producer just doesn't want you for that role, right? Um, so, you know, with film too, I can't say that. I'm going to guarantee you're going to get a job on Spielberg's production. No, it doesn't work that way. So, but what I will tell you is that you're going to be very, very prepared to step into 
uh, any role on a crew or any audition and feel comfortable doing all that or be a producer and you're you're going to have classes related to budgeting, scheduling, pitching projects. Um, so you have classes related to the business of what you're studying, regardless of what you're studying. Um, you also have the industry outreach team supporting you on that next step. And then those of you that are doing filmmaking or cinematography, the film festival department will help you strategically put your films in film festivals as well. So you start getting more exposure that way also, your final project. So um, it is very, very supportive in that sense. And then you also have access to our alumni network as well, which I advise you to take full advantage of that as well. Yeah. Perfect, Gil. Thank you. When people should start their admission preparation? So uh, depending on when you're looking to start, so we have our uh, January, May, and August intakes. If you're looking to start in 2024, now's a great time to do it because I always tell people do it a year in advance so that you have everything done with time. Um, that's my biggest piece of advice for anybody. Um, and, and again, the students that come through you guys are are, are very organized, very prepared for, for the most part. But uh, do everything with time. You don't want to be that person who's stressing out a month beforehand and you still don't have your visa and you don't have housing and you don't like you, you don't want to do that. Trust me, it's stressful for me. 10 times worse for you. <laughs> um, so try to do it a year in advance and, and start getting everything in uh, in time. Um, and then that way you're, you're, you're giving yourself enough time for everything. And, you know, sometimes you need to switch your start date. That's not a big deal. We can switch your start date very easily. Uh, sometimes people are like, no, you know what? It just feels a little too rushed. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. And, and I want to be in the right frame of mind. Perfectly fine. We can always switch your date till later on. Um, but yeah, I would definitely start that process a, a year in advance. Could you please repeat which is the minimum level of English students need to have? Yeah, yeah. And I, I want to add, if you want to start in, in, in January or May, it doesn't mean that now is too late. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, start now. Um, the minimum level, so for uh, the TOEFL, we're going to require a 78. Um, and then for the IELTS, it's going to be a 6.5. Perfect. Well, uh, if you went to an IB school or you studied a year or longer at a at an English speaking university uh, in an English speaking country, then you can get a waiver on that. Yeah. Okay, so we do not have more questions, but just to finish, will you please give us one advice for those <laughs> who are planning to attend to the New York Film Academy? Oh, man, I have so much advice for everybody. I, I love the students that are creating stuff already. And it doesn't mean that they're making movies. Some of you are, which is awesome. But those of you that are just trying it with your phones or whatever. And I, I always tell this story. Martin Scorsese, who has done everything there is to accomplish in this field, still gets nervous before his movie premieres. Because he looks at the movies and he's like, oh, my God, I would have done that differently. I would have done that differently. So... When you're doing stuff, if you've created, if you're a creator and you look at stuff you made two years ago, you, you probably think that's atrocious and you don't want to look at it, but that's growth. And that's what it is. And the only way you're going to grow by doing that is by going out there and doing it and keep doing it. Um, Leo Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, LeBron James, those guys didn't get to the level they're at because they only picked up a ball when it was game time. There's millions of hours, thousands of hours of practice, hundreds of thousands of hours of practice that goes into that. Right. So You want to make sure that you're practicing as well and constantly doing that and 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 getting little so even if you're shooting little things in your backyard that you're editing and putting a story together or writing something and writing stories and you know i had a teacher that told me some of the best things to do is sometimes just sit in a coffee shop or a restaurant and have your headphones on but nothing playing and you're just listening to the stories around you and you get amazing stories that way right and each of you come from a very unique perspective you guys are telling stories and you guys are living experiences that People in the United States don't experience, right? Uh, you guys have an amazing background of history in your country uh, that, that you know, we don't experience here in the United States. So uh, tap into all those things and all those rich stories and, you know, rich family members and, and not rich in money, but rich in stories, right? Uh, although rich in money if you need it. Um, but tap into all those stories and, and just start writing and start creating these stories because that's, um, yeah, the only way to get better is to 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 keep doing it. And then the other thing I want to leave you with, too, is that when you're here, take full advantage of the collaborative process here. You're going to meet amazing screenwriters. You're going to meet amazing animators. You're going to meet amazing producers. You're going to meet amazing filmmakers, amazing actors. Take full advantage of that because these are people that are going to be your network. These are people that you never know if you're in a position to help them later on or they're in a position to help you. Um, and I always tell this story. 
1977, there was two young directors that were uh, making sci-fi films in Hollywood. And uh, one of them was Steven Spielberg, who was coming off of the success of Jaws, um, the, the shark movie, right? The one that created the summer blockbuster. Uh, and he was working in a movie called Close Encounters of a Third Kind. Um, if you haven't seen it, see it. Just remember it's 1977, so the graphics aren't what they are today, but it's a good story. Um, and his friend goes to see his, his set, and his friend is like, oh, my God, your movie is going to kill my movie. Look at this, these props, the story, blah, blah, blah. And Spielberg's like, no, 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 calm down. Your your movie, your movie's great. I really like your story. You have a good story. He goes, I'll tell you what, if it makes you feel better. Let's make a deal. I'll give you two percent of what my movie makes. You give me two percent of what your movie makes, and that way, if one of us makes it, the other one doesn't. At least we make some money. All right, they make a deal. Close Encounters goes on to make about three hundred million dollars worldwide. Um, Nineteen seventy-seven, not now, where the ticket price is twenty-five dollars. Three hundred million dollars worldwide. Spielberg to the stratosphere, right? Um, that other director was George Lucas, who was working on a little movie called Star Wars. Um, and uh, to this day, uh, Spielberg has made over $50 million off his buddy, George Lucas, from that 2% deal that they made. The reason why I make that, they didn't go to school together, but they came up together. They have worked together in so many different projects. And if any two guys could have an ego big enough to to they screw off and not work with each other, it's those two. And they've worked together all these years. Find your Spielberg, find your Lucas, create uh, and and uh, get along with everybody you work with while you're there. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Jill. So that concludes our webinar. We really appreciate you taking your time today. And thank you for your patience. <laughs> you know, you're always welcome here. And with no more to add, have an excellent day. And thank all uh, who are connected. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you all. I'm going to send you uh, our, the link to the events we have, in, uh, but with that coming up in a couple of weeks, if you can share it with everybody who's on here or the people that signed up and weren't able to be here, I look forward to seeing you all. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you, Luisa. Thank you, Corfuturo, for everything, and uh, see you soon. Bye. Thank you.